What is up, down, and sideways, you beautiful individuals? Welcome back. It's another repi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties, to dive a little deeper into the absolutely astronomically insanely ludicrous numbers from the LCK Spring Split because they were shattering records left, right, and center. And that begs the question as we see the LCS and LEC taking budget cuts across the board, viewership numbers are dipping, the LCK is sitting pretty in the absolute prime of their life right now. Now, there is some very surface-level uh, analysis that can go through with this one. There's some very obvious answers that we will talk about why the LCK continues to grow in, leader in viewership, continuing to show and be that leader for League of Legends on that, uh, in that front. But we also have a little couple of secrets, a couple uh, special analysis to go through and deep dive into what makes the LCK that special region that just keeps bringing people back to watch more. So obviously, first we look at these nutty spring numbers, 2.6 million peak viewership, obviously that coming in the finals between T1 and Gen G. And I know this is the best rivalry in the world right now, the most popular team, the most popular player, but that's more peak viewers than MSI got last year, an international event. That alone is absolutely insane. Yeah, and that's of course part of it is taking in the T1 buff. And that T1 buff is extremely strong this year, hot off the tails, of a world championship and the same roster running it back through want to get that challenge and especially leading up to that gen g matchup getting that rematch that chance to deny the back to back to back to back championships for chovi and the gen g crew get that redemption that type of final of course it always builds up to that but the other important things to check in with are these other big matches all the way through these playoffs you can check in Gen G and D plus Kia. You had a mega showdown and a big time viewership as well. People aren't just tuning in for T1. It is the whole of the LCK bringing in these viewership numbers. Yeah, over a million peak viewers for that non T1 matchup in the playoffs. And obviously that speaks to, first off, as it should, D plus is a former world champion. There were a lot of showmaker fans out there and Gen G has been so dominant over the last two plus years domestically that their fan base has risen to new heights. Chovy has been one of the best players in the world for multiple years, and the Church of Chovy is very full these days. So many different things to look at why the LCK is popping off. When we pull up the LEC and LCS viewership for comparison, obviously neither of them even scratching close to 2.6 million uh, peak viewership, which is understandable because again, that is crazy. Uh, but the average viewers across all the spring split in the LCK, 355,000, that's 52% more than they were getting in spring last year. And that average viewership was more than the peak viewership in finals for the LCS. Just on average, they have more than the peak in NA. I'm uh, I'm going to take a, a little bit of the LCS defender stance here and give them some credit because the LCS at the very least had actually a little bit of positive growth. Never mind the more important thing, stopping the slide. I think that They're was in the, the green one. this split versus last year. Now you might say there there wasn't much more of a slide that really you could survive for the LCS, but at the very least they do stop that slide and yes it is in the green growing a little bit for them and the LEC is that one where it comes in that counter punch and the LCS is joined in that counter punch of going, yep, we're saving money. We're rolling through with the in studio finals. The LCS uh, maybe a little bit more glitter sprinkle dust on it than the LEC put on it for the studio, but still in that studio. And the comparison to what we just saw in the LCK between Gen G and T1, remove all that gameplay, talk about the environment, talk about the show leading up to those games. Talk about what it meant for the fans and what it enabled them in that cheering. That is a, a totally different level. Yeah, it's, I mean, this split in particular was the most jarring it's probably ever been with those budget cuts in NA and EU. But that is one of the many reasons why the LCK is doing so well right now is the investment budget-wise and just creativity and effort honestly that they put into especially these finals and playoff runs 
these feel like international events. These feel like you're at Worlds or at MSI, whereas you see G2 lifting yet another trophy at the end of spring. They don't even look that excited because they're bored of the venue. And, and I'm just pained because how many years ago was it that we were watching G2 and Fnatic in an arena and having you know, G2 win it with, you know, perks and caps and celebrating lifting that trophy surrounded by the fans in the arena right there with them. That type of community atmosphere. We haven't had it since really for the LEC is the way that it goes. And when you're missing these type of events, these type of moments, we've had a sprinkling of, of these live events come through for these regions, but it's not anywhere close to the same and the level of, of respect and hype and preparation that you are getting for the LCK in these ones. And I think there's another couple of other things to talk about. Another one really that does play in outside of all those things, it's the broadcast. What the actual quality and quantity in this broadcast is, the LCK is beating every other region. I think when you look at the LCS and the LPL, there is a, a little bit of a side content that comes through that is of quality, that is entertaining, all these type of things. The LEC has certainly slid in that regard from where they had been one of the leading ones uh, a couple of years ago now maybe the odd pop quiz comes through from the lec and uh, i mean aside from their yearly reckless song that's about it that we're getting from them that's feeling pretty good for the community you look at the lck the who are you man secret boardroom we're running through the lck podcast all these things they keep you entertained. I'm watching the first series of the day, whatever it is. And then I got like, you know, that, you know, 30 to 40 minute wait for the next series. Every other region. I'm out of there. I'm out of there. You can't hold my attention. I'm finding something on YouTube. I'm going to Twitch. I'm going to make a snack, whatever. LCK, I'm staying in my seat. I'm watching whatever little show, whatever little program is running through. And that shows in the viewer retention hours going up for the LCK as well. Over 40% more viewed hours that is gotta be something here and they have not one but two high quality broadcasts the english broadcast with the boys obviously we love but the domestic korean broadcast has so many resources personalities flavor funneled into it it's they got everything going, especially now when you see the LPL, the split. They're not even having English broadcasts. They're the latest to take a big step back in terms of investing into their own league, which is a surprise because obviously it's them and the LCK that have been going back and forth. So many other reasons why the LCK is doing so well. Number one is they're the premier region. People want to tune in for the highest quality League of Legends, and I know they've been competitive, and the LPL has won a lot over the last few years now, but still, three out of the last four world championships have been an LCK team, and they're still the only region that has players imported across every other major region, even the LPL, of course. I think it is also, you know, you go through and you're looking through these matches and you might get a, a dud in the LCS or the LEC and there's not really a lot of attention, not a lot of traction. It stops, you know, your momentum between games sometimes in a day where you were feeling it in the first game and then you get this dud and then it's like, I don't really want to watch another uh, League of Legends game after that one type of situation. You miss out on maybe a good game or another good team type of situation. The LCK, man, I'm sticking around to watch Bro versus Live Sandbox or the Quantum Dong Freaks. I don't care who it's going to be. You're still watching those bottom tier matchups in the LCK. The production, the, the casters is another big thing that I want to talk about. As you mentioned, you have those two great broadcasts. Of course, the English broadcast, you've got your mainstays, Valdez and Atlas, Chronicler. These guys that have been there for so long and stay there are those familiar voices that you know and provide you that entertainment alongside incredibly valuable information during the game. And then you go to the main broadcast and there is nobody greater. You got the GOAT himself, Caster June, on the desk. The only guy better... He's in the LCS, Captain Flowers. We got our guy. Then you get Cap C Caster June, and then you roll on through to the LEC, and it's nothing against the casters, but again, it's the whole product of that league and what we're watching in the games. I'm sorry, but I got the LEC on one monitor, and I'm probably muting that broadcast, and I've got K-Drill. I got the Rat. I got Double Lift. I got somebody else on that co-stream that I'm watching for that entertainment factor. Well, that's the thing. There's a lot of these big-name personalities that either used to be on the broadcast or could be on the broadcast and have opted into the co-streaming because it's 
it's probably, not probably, it's more lucrative for these guys. It's probably easier for them. So there's so many things still going right for the LCK. And I mean, at the root of it all is still absolutely the Faker and T1 buff. Case in point, Riot probably watching that Hanwha Life series saying, please, 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 we need that T1 viewership because I guarantee you, however MSI ends up playing out, if T1 is playing in the later final stages, I don't even think it's an exaggeration to say you might have 100% higher viewership if T1 is on the Rift or not. We need to find a way to quantify it, get those records down, because I think that you're onto something. I think it could a be. A 3 0 against Weibo had over 6.4 million people watching at Worlds. If that was even Gen G in the finals, that number's taken a huge dip. And I think everyone needs to just take a second to take a step back and also go, okay, this is a 14 year old game right now, and the way that it continues to push and grow in this Eastern region, especially specifically that LCK, that's absolutely got to be looked at and commended and, and recognized for what it is. You talk about, you know, these other factors that go in the T1 buff, the best region in the world. You're watching the defending world champions and you know that storyline of what well, you've got the defending world champion. You've got that small storied organization in League of Legends, but you know that they're heading back to their own region, their own region where they've been eclipsed. By there's younger, younger brother rising on through the Gen G. And as you mentioned, you've got those Church of Chovy. It has been so much domination in the LCK by Gen G. They've accumulated their own fan base that is vocal, that is there, is present, just like the T1 fans. To see that brew in the LCK, that is something special, and it speaks to what type of environment this region can, pr can bring together. It really feels like the LCK, and if you want to go more specifically, Faker and T1, they are Atlas holding the world on their shoulders. And that is the not just, you know, the LCK or it's the entire competitive League of Legends scene that they're holding on their shoulders. And it feels like Riot is kind of like, that. Ah, great. They'll, they'll kind of take care of it. We can do all these budget cuts, invest even less on the other sides because the LCK faker is going to carry our brand. And there's not one of these things where you kind of want to take a step back and say as well, how do we work this to be even better? Because even if you are at the top, there's still always room for improvement, all these type of things. It's hard to really identify any of those things for the LCK. I think really it is to looking at these other regions and identifying what things you can take from the LCK, that inspiration on how you improve your broadcast, how you improve that viewer experience. And, you know, if you're the LCS, you've had to take some more experimental risks this year than I think that you would have been prepared to take if you wanted to follow just the LCK type of route. But you're seeing that type of reaction. You're seeing that positivity. I think you need to bite that worm just a little bit more on the hook and realize, OK, we can't skimp on these big live events. The LCK is showing us the way that it's done, the way that you foster this community and environment, and the numbers will follow. At the very least, you know who you can rely on. MSI in China, they're gonna be up to the level and match whatever we're getting out of the LCK and probably exceed it because it's an international event. It, it, it better be there for this one in, in China for the way that this one production should go. I, I've got full faith that they are gonna be putting that full power, full force behind it. The question is going to be, again, is there enough there from Riot to keep the viewership, keep fans there with the official broadcast, the official side content and everything else? Or is it really going to be one of those ones, again, where that entertainment factor, where these other things, the storylines aren't carried, aren't done well enough that people got to go to KJ, people got to go to other co-streamers and find that other avenue of entertainment just the way that they do with the LEC, with the LCS, not like they do with the LCK. Yeah, what you really should be looking at is what are the numbers for non-T1 matchups at MSI? Are they Because they should still be pulling at an international event at a high level, whether T1 is on the rift or not. But at the very least, all these other major regions should be taking notes from what the LCK is doing right now because they are absolutely crushing it. That is all the time today, though, for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beauties, as always, thanks for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.